Welcome to Nomad PHP Lightning Talks. I'm Joe Ferguson. Nomad PHP Lightning Talks are 10 minute talks that give a high level overview or an in depth look at a small portion of a PHP related topic. Lightning Talks are a great way for new speakers to build their speaking resume and for long time speakers to test drive new talk ideas. Right now we have Matthew Trask and his talk is called Writing Your First Test with PHP Unit. Please make sure you visit join in after the talk and leave Matthew some feedback. Matthew, take it away. Cool. All right. Uh, I think everything's set up. There's a beautiful picture of the Magic Kingdom there in case everyone wants to know. My favorite spot is. Uh, like Joe said, my name is Matt, and I am going to be taking you through a basic PHP unit, kind of writing your first test. Um, you know, it's 2016, and there is still people not writing unit tests. And as someone once told me in a very German accent, there's enough bad code on the internet already, so why contribute more, right? So, PHP unit is written by uh, Sebastian Bergman, if you don't know. Um, part of the PHP CC consulting company. He um, is a contractor who just flies around the world, talks about PHP unit, and helps teams kind of write better code. And so I got the pleasure of working with him for um, about eight months and out of nowhere, just from writing zero tests to test-driven development, Sebastian took me from basically zero to hero. So we're going to, I have a simple little demo I wrote up today. Um, we're just going to take a simple look at how to write a few uh, user tests, or I'm sorry, a, a few unit tests. Um, and a few things that we should probably talk about first is what is a unit test and what are the asserts that you always see? Because I remember when I first started with PHP unit, the asserts, and I'll show you them right here, the asserts were always scary to me because I had no idea what an assert actually was. So to start, what a unit test is, is a unit test is covering the smallest amount of code possible. We really only want to test nothing that has dependencies. So, for instance, if I had an application that had uh, Guzzle and Twilio and um, Twig and Slim as the base, my unit test should not be covering Guzzle or Twilio. They should just be covering the smallest amount of code, say, is this phone number a 10 digit number or is this telephone number a string? Well, if so, you should throw an exception. That's what we really want to test with a unit test. Anything else after that becomes integration tests, application tests, edge to edge tests, and those are other cool tools that you can use with PHP unit, things like Codeception and Bahat and all that. But really, we're just focusing on the very small, bare bones tests possible. So you open up immediately with Composer, as always. Um, I required PHP unit and I just did 5.star. The latest is 5.5. Um, and he's really changed it going forward. Uh, 4.8 was the first one to get long term support, but 5. anything right now is current, active, it's uh, being worked on, it's accepting pull requests, um, and all that kind of good stuff. So we want to go ahead and pull in PHP. Unit 5.star, and I'm going to get 5.4 if you know Composer to star is the wild card. Set up our auto loaders here. We're going to set up an auto loader for my classes and as well as one for the uh, tests. Pretty simple so far. Um, PHP unit.xml is another file that you need. And this basically just tells PHP unit what is, what is going on with this test suite. So you have a few. Uh, options up here where the bootstrap file is. We're going to use Composer's uh, vendor autoload. If it needs to stop on failure, do we want the colors? And I'll show you all that in just a second. And what are we testing? So our test suite is the tests directory. And we map it up here. And then we say the whitelist is our source folder. Our source folder is what we want actually tested. And because it's in the whitelist, now we get the cool code coverage. Um, and code coverage is just an indication. It's not something you should follow rigorously, but it is a good way to visualize how your code is being covered. So we're going to open up. I have two simple classes here. I have a name class that just takes in the name. We're going to assure that it's a string. We want to get the name. We want it, and then we're going to return it. So if it comes in and it's not a string, we're going to throw an, an exception. Then we have a user. It takes in the name, gets the name, and it returns it as JSON. 
So imagine this is probably something for a back-end component, some sort of web API, um, anything like that. So we have our two tests here, user tests and our name tests. And we'll look at the name test first just because that's where um, everything starts. And real quick, this should be up there. But, so, let's take a look at this real fast. We have our name test. We want to test that it's a string, and then we want to test that it will throw an exception if it's not a string. Actually. So, we come over to here, to our terminal. All you want to run is PHP unit, the vendor bin PHP unit. I'm setting it up with code coverage, and I'm throwing in docs as um, as where the test coverage should go. And then I'm also using the keyword test docs. What that's going to do is it's going to take all of your test names right here, test username is string, and actually return it as a user readable format. So if you have QA people who are not very technical or bosses or anyone who is not a programmer looking at your test, it will actually spit out in a human readable form so that way you can actually know what's going on. And so we run it. And this is a great example because you can see here the X's show that the test is passed and the blanks show that it is not passed at all. So we have three passing tests and one failed test. So I ran the code coverage and there you go. You can see here, green is obviously good. Yellow is eh, not so good. Red is, you should probably fix it. We have 100% coverage on users. And you can see here, the difference between is green is code that is actually covered. Yellow is code that is executed yet not covered, but because it's a closing brace, it can't really be tested or used or anywhere like that. So Sebastian just highlights it as he calls it dead code. So nothing bad about anything in here. In my name, obviously I messed up the name portion, but that's a good example to show you that now we have a green saying that the instance of name took in a name and is sure that it was a string and then sets it up as a private property. Obviously the name is looking for a singular object, not two objects. And then it's saying that if it's not a string, if there's an exception. So Obviously, with this, when it takes in an exception, and this is the nice little trick that he changed in uh, the 5. Dot series of PHP unit, originally you had to do something like this, where you would say um, expects exception, where now, and part of my horrible typing, I'm the worst typer ever, but now you just call it as a property on the method and it returns as the exception. So that's how you now test exceptions in PHP unit is saying that this class expects this exception to be thrown if this method has anything wrong with it. The one thing I found out today is if we actually cover that out and pull this one back in and have it after the fact, after the classes or the uh, class and the method are already executed, PHP unit actually will supposed to throw an error. I guess it doesn't want to. Actually, it'll throw its own exception right here. So going back to this real fast, if you have it after the method, it'll throw its own internal exception, whereas if you have it set up beforehand saying that we already know we're expecting an exception, then PHP unit knows the run through the method, trigger the exception, and then um, let it run normally. So the only other thing that can get you started with PHP unit is knowing that in your docs is your code coverage. And like I already had it pulled up in the browser, but I'm, to show you how to do it, you just open in browser. And it's nice, simple, easy to use right there on localhost. 
and that's basically it. That's how you get started with user, or I'm sorry, unit testing. It's very simple. It's very straightforward. All you want to do is just simple, small tests. The smaller, the better. And the biggest thing I can leave you with is remember that you're not testing what's happening. You want to test the actual method. Let the test run the internal code by itself. You don't want to test if this has for each loops, if loops, switch statements, and things like that. You just want to call the method and whatever is returned. Let it fail inside, and that's how you know your code is not going to work at all. So if you all have any questions, my Twitter is at Matthew Trask, T-R-A-S-K. And I'm always around in IRC and Twitter and all those places. So, Joe, I'll let you take it back. All right, thanks for joining us for another Nomad PHP Lightning Talk. If you'd like to give a Lightning Talk, please email me, joe at nomadphp.com. Please make sure you visit Joined In and leave Matthew some feedback.